Yo, what's going on, guys? Before the video starts, I just want to let you know that I do understand Black Myth Wukong is not supposed to be a Souls-like, but I did want to give you guys uh, the perspective of someone who plays uh, a lot of Souls games, enjoys Souls games. Lies of P is probably my favorite Souls-like ever. I loved that game so much. Elden Ring has been amazing. Uh, Dark Souls 3 has been great. These were all games I played recently in the last two years. And then also as someone who has played God of War Ragnarok, uh, God of War and Final Fantasy 16, which are games that are probably more, um, you know, similar to this game right now. Uh, and those are the games that I think people should be making more direct comparisons to. Um, I'm, I am going to be doing all of this in one take. Uh, I don't mean to offend anyone. This is not a review. This is just like a point of discussion because I am actually curious because I don't see anyone really talking about this online, which means it could honestly just be me. And I feel like I am a very harsh uh, critic of games and I can be overly uh negative sometimes but i was looking forward to this game not as much as other people because i was worried that it wasn't going to play very well i was worried that it was going to feel like maybe lords of the fallen uh which didn't feel as tight as maybe like lies of p or any other souls like um so i i did want to have my reservations in case the game felt bad but it actually felt amazing the game felt amazing it looked amazing um, so we'll get into that. Uh, it is all going to be done in one take. So I, I do apologize if I blabber, uh, but we'll go through some of the points off the top of my head. Um, we are going to be focusing on mainly combat today because I don't really care for story. I've heard the story is pretty mixed, uh, as in like there are some mixed opinions about it. I, for one, I kind of like, you know, I love the intro. The intro was amazing. So it kind of pulled me into the story right away. But then I guess within the first three hours, I did kind of forget where I was. That is another point I should address. Uh, I did refund the game after three hours of playing. Uh, not, not because I hated it. It's just I don't think it's a game that I can fit into my schedule right now. Um, and, you know, the same with a lot of other people that play games. People have busy schedules. Me, I stream a lot and I have to kind of, you know, be wise uh, in regards to which games I'm going to be playing. And $90 is just kind of like a big chunk. It's kind of like, you know, the standard price of games nowadays. Uh, 90 Australian dollars. Um, in fact, I think this game was honestly probably on the cheaper side compared to a lot of games that have come out in the past. Uh, but I think it's a game that I'm going to revisit in the future at some point. Prefer to go back and play some of these other games that, um, that I, I've just spoken about just now. Um, but yeah, so I've only played three hours. I have watched a lot of gameplay and a lot of streams of, of gameplay uh, later on in the game. So I feel like my... Um, my idea of the game is probably still pretty accurate but again correct me if i'm wrong because this is just a discussion not like you know I i'm not saying this is this is fact this is just my opinion on the first three hours and then you know watching other people play the game and then thinking okay yeah i don't think i'm going to enjoy it later on uh, or at least it's going to be the same more of the same later on so yeah but yeah, I think uh, my biggest... Well, let, let's talk about the good things. So again, the good things, the game looks stunning. The animations are amazing. The game feels really good to play. Um, unless you have, you know, stuttering issues, which I know a few people are having. But for me, I didn't have any performance issues at all. The game almost feels like a boss rush. Um, there is almost like no, uh, you know, world to tra traverse through at all. Like there isn't like Elden Ring or in, in Dark Souls games. Uh, I don't have a problem with this at all. I'm more than happy to just go from boss to boss. That is the main reason I play uh, a lot of the Souls games. So I was completely fine with that. Uh, there's no map either, which I know a lot of people were complaining about. Uh, but I don't see why you would need a map for this game because it's very, very linear. Uh, I think if you get lost in the game, that's probably you're not paying attention. Or you could just be really bad with directions. But me personally, I always get lost in games and I did not get lost playing once in the first three hours. I will say that the later parts of the game do look a little bit more um, open. Uh, but at the same time, I've also seen a lot of people run into invisible walls. Uh, I've run into a bunch of invisible walls. So I think it is still pretty linear at that point. Uh, the bosses, I think they are, they are really cool. Um, that big like white ape boss that I think, you know, they showed in gameplay from years ago. Uh, I think it looks better in the, in the final game than it did years ago, which is kind of weird. Normally it's the other way around where they'll reveal something and it looks incredible. And then when they actually drop the game, they downgrade it. They, they do the Ubisofts. Uh, I think it looks amazing. Uh, the animations on the bosses are really cool. I think the bosses are kind of like, you know, they kind of have personality so far too. So I think that's pretty cool. And at the beginning of the game, you have this like sequence where you're fighting one of the bosses that I assume you fight later in the game, uh, where you you have pretty much all the powers of uh, of what Wukong would have. And it just feels crazy. It feels crazy being able to just press X and everything like kind of does it for you, which I didn't see as a problem in that moment, but I probably should have seen that as like a, a red flag. 
um but it looked really cool it looked incredible it was a spectacle uh i think i think that was that was amazing um but yeah that's kind of i think that's kind of where my main issue um with the game is the combat is very button mashy i feel and this is someone who's just come from final fantasy 16 which i agree is quite button mashy too um, I guess this is the difference between a Souls-like and kind of, you know, like an action game or an action RPG. I'd say this is probably not even an RPG. Uh, I've seen the progression system later on. It pretty much is just, you know, you find a new piece of armor, put that one on because it's probably better than your last piece of armor. There's not much customization in terms of the armor pieces. Uh, I'd argue that God of War Ragnarok kind of didn't really have that either. Like they did have cool armor pieces that had perks and stuff on them. But me personally, I was always just putting on the best piece of armor that had the highest rating. Um, I know Final Fantasy 16 did not have any form of like, you know, RPG element at all in terms of like armor and that sort of stuff because you were literally just putting on the, the highest stat number. That's pretty much all the pieces of armor in that game had. But yeah, so in Black Myth, basically what you're doing is you are trying to build your focus bar up. Uh, I believe that's what it was called. Um, the focus bar is basically what gives your heavy attacks power. Um, so I will be going into a fight. I will be trying to light attack the enemy as much as I can. I believe perfect dodges as well also fill up your focus meter too. Primarily the way you would be building up this focus is by light attacking. Uh, and the light attack combo is, is super satisfying. It's, you know, it's, it's a really cool animation. But pretty much all you do is press X three or four times or your light attack button, whatever it may be. Uh, you press it three or four times and it'll execute the combo. Um, by the time you've light attacked, I think maybe seven or eight times. So a combo and a half. Uh, you'll have run out of stamina, but then you'll have gotten your, your charge to heavy attack. So I found myself in this cycle where I was waiting for myself to have my heavy, but then I was also waiting for my stamina. I know later on in the game, you can upgrade your stamina, so that problem will probably resolve. You can also have more focus charges later in the game, but it did seem too much of like, you know, a, a cycle of just trying to recharge that focus meter. That focus meter seemed like way too much of a priority uh, in, in my fighting style. Um, you did have, you do have all these other abilities and stuff you can use, like these spells. I think the spells are something that do really well in this game, like being able to clone yourself, being able to go invisible. But me personally, as someone who who plays Souls games and doesn't play as a mage, I found them kind of like I I would want to get rid of them right away. So as soon as I enter a boss room, I would use every one of my abilities, so then they'd come on cooldown faster, and I'd be able to use them again in the fight. There was no real kind of like tactical moment that I felt like I should have used any spell. It was just always use all my spells right away and then just light attack until my heavies are ready uh, and combo my heavies into my into my light attacks. I just wish there was something else to do in between a string of abilities while they're on cooldown, aside from just light attack. Um, I, I could be completely off the mark here, but this is even what I saw at higher level gameplay, people that were like near the end of the game. Uh, it looked pretty much identical. Uh, to my gameplay, just like a little bit more flashy. Um, even down the skill tree, down the skill tree, most of the stuff you unlock is just pretty much empowering your ability to spam X. Uh, what it kind of reminds me of is like in a fighting game or in Tekken, if you play on the mode where it does all the combos for you automatically, you don't have to actually put any inputs in. Um, so I don't, I don't know if what I'm looking for is something more challenging. When I was looking down the skill trees as well, I saw the ability to switch between different staff stances too. And I thought that was really cool. And I was really excited to try the different stances out. But ultimately, all they seem to do is change your heavy attack. So again, you're just using your regular light combo and then waiting for your heavy attack to come back, which is the only thing that has like, you know, any real variance in the game using those different stances. I was kind of disappointed by this. Uh, and this is probably where I want to hear most of the opinions from, or at least I want to hear opinions from people that have played God of War Ragnarok or have played Final Fantasy 16. Uh, those two games are probably some of my favorite action games in, in, the re in recent years. Um, those games had uh, their own ways of like switching between weapon systems in the middle of combat on the fly. So let's just say God of War, you could switch between your axe, you could switch between your blades, uh, and then in the new game, you could switch to a, a spear as well. And you could do everything in the middle of like combos and stuff. So I could throw my axe out, then quickly switch to my blades, execute like a light combo with my blades. Then I could use my blade abilities that were off cooldown. I could switch to my spear, use my spear abilities, then maybe like heavy attack with the spear. I, there was so much you could do and so much kind of variety in your gameplay. Um, you could grapple enemies in the middle of like, you know, uh, uh, like in between combos and stuff. Uh, and then in Final Fantasy 16, that game really does kind of feel like a button mash at times. Uh, and I don't mean to glaze—I don't mean to glaze these two games. If there's a game I'm glazing, it's Final Fantasy 16 because I freaking love that game. But I do understand that game 
was very button mashy, but at least I could do more than a light combo. I could throw fireballs in the middle of, in the middle of the combo without having to worry about cooldowns. I could fly up into the air and then, you know, do aerial combos, ground slams, stuff that didn't have cooldowns, but would make the main combo sequence feel better. Um, I remember like vividly one of my favorite combos as well was switch, you know, kind of similar to the staff system here. Uh, or what I wish the staff system was, I could switch between um, the different uh, the different gods in Final Fantasy 16. I could switch from Garuda to, um, let's just say, Titan. I would throw myself into the air with Garuda's wind abilities, then switch mid-air and land with a ground attack from Titan. It, it, there was just so much to do, and I feel like that's not the case in this game, at least in the first three hours, and what I've seen other people do. It really does just seem like... Let's fucking throw all our abilities out ASAP and then play the rest like, you know, like it's like it, like we're auto-attacking in League of Legends or something. That's a very crude example. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I I could be completely way too harsh. I've, I've been known to be pretty harsh when it comes to talking about games. Um, again, I, I probably sound like I hate the game, but I am focusing on the bad. I think there is a lot of good in this game. I think if you enjoy like, you know, uh, using your abilities and kind of... Go, like, you know, going invisible, the clone stuff. I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, I think the transformations are pretty cool, but I, at, at the end of the day, they are just, you know, more light attacks followed by waiting for a heavy attack, at least in the first fire transformation. Uh, it still was cool. It was still really cool. Don't don't get me wrong. It was like fucking crazy switching into the, uh, the fire dancing guy, whatever he was. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think if there's any advice to anyone I have going into the game, uh, don't fight that big baby. Because I think maybe fighting that big baby kind of like soured my opinion of the game because he was an absolute sponge and I really did feel like I was just light attacking him the entire time. Um, so I would avoid the big baby, just go past him, come back to him later. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's still a good game. I, I still would recommend the game to anyone that like, you know, wants a game uh, that's similar to, to God of War and stuff. But if you haven't played God of War, I would suggest going to play those games. Um, and if you trust me enough, Go and play Final Fantasy 16. I feel like that game was so much fun to like combo and like fly around in, uh, in terms of like, you know, an action RPG game and the dodging and stuff in that game. It's, dude, the dodging was fucking crazy in that game. I, I feel like that game is kind of more similar to Black Myth Wukong than God of War was. Uh, and, and so I definitely recommend that game over Black Myth. I, I again, I don't want to seem like I'm glazing, but those are just two examples um, I, me personally, like the first three hours of Black Myth Wukong, I would probably put it at like, I don't even know, like probably like a seven out of 10. Like it's not bad. It's not a bad game at all. It's just like, I'm wondering if anyone else sees these issues with the game where they do feel like they're just pressing X or light attack all the time. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the, in the, in the comments below. Again, this was like a very informal, informal thing. I just wanted to see what other people were thinking. And also because I don't think I've seen any anyone with like, you know, an experience in Souls likes uh, making a comparison to this game. Because again, I'm looking for like a game that's going to make me suffer. I'm looking for a game that's going to make me feel accomplished beating a boss after being stuck in him for two hours or like an hour. If all I have to do is press X and circle every now and then, it, it can be a bit mind numbing at times. But yeah, just let me know what you guys think. I appreciate uh, you guys listening to me. Peace.